so welcome to lecture 9 in lecture 9 we will continue our study of rigid body kinematics so far we have focused on the rotation of a rigid body and we have understood that every rotating rigid body has an angular velocity which changes not just in its magnitude but also its direction it could be pointing this way or that way as time goes on we understood the angular velocity vector by studying the body fixed coordinate system associated with the rigid body and we understood better the connection the deep kinematic connection between the body fixed coordinate system and the rigid body itself in this lecture we will introduce the notion of velocity and acceleration of points of the rigid body or points which are moving somewhere and are studied from the body fixed coordinate system of the rigid body this will lead to notions of velocity analysis and kinematic analysis which we will study in a systematic way in this lecture we will focus on mostly on velocities velocity analysis is the term given to analyzing multiply connected rigid bodies so for example a very common engineering system is the so called four bar system which is present in many many engineering systems for example the engine itself has a four bar system this is called a four bar system and it really consists of three rigid bodies the fourth rigid body is fixed to the ground is the ground itself so how does if i if i rotate this rigid body how will the rest of the rigid body system move that constitutes velocity analysis and subsequently in the next lecture we will do an acceleration analysis so let's begin this lecture the fundamental notion in studying rigid body kinematics is that of the relative time derivative so let's understand this so suppose there is a vector u which is being observed in two coordinate systems a primary coordinate system given by e0 and a secondary coordinate system which i have explicitly said is varying with time so the unit vectors of the prime of the secondary coordinate system are changing with time okay so a typical picture could be this suppose i have a coordinate system which is attached to a rigid body okay so that's my rigid body and that's the bfcs of the rigid body okay so this is e which is changing with time at the same time i have a coordinate system and let us say this coordinate system is also observing and uh, sorry this coordinate system is given by e0 and both these coordinate systems are observing a vector u okay what could this vector u of t be which is all this vector u is also changing with time well this vector u for example could be the velocity of a particle p okay so this could be the velocity of the particle p it could also be the acceleration of particle p right so we this so this u could be velocity it could be acceleration it could be position of the particle with respect to some third coordinate system right some coordinate system let's call it e double prime and this u is actually this vector r of p okay it could be the angular momentum of some uh, object so there are many choices of u and this u is being measured i mean u is changing with time it is being measured with respect to this bfcs which is time varying and it is with and it is being measured with respect to this e0 so that's the setup and the question that we have is that if we know that the body fixed coordinate system this e is rotating at some angular velocity omega of e with respect to e0 so that is given e0 is observing this u and it measure that it changes at the rate u dot okay at the same time this bfcs this e is also measuring u and it is changing with time with respect to e also and it measures another rate which is i am calling it u open dot okay you can call it u ring whatever you want to call it okay i just want to differentiate between this time rate of change measured in e0 and this time rate of change measured in e they can be different things okay so for example you and i are sitting on planet earth and we watch that the moon 
is moving at a particular velocity. At the same time, somebody who is sitting on a spacecraft going around the earth will see the moon going at a different velocity. We are both measuring the location of the moon, but the rate at which its location changes with respect to the earth and with respect to the spacecraft are different. So, this u dot is different from u open dot, u ring, whatever you call it. Okay. And the question is, how can you relate u dot and u open dot? And the answer I have provided in this equation right now is, this is how you relate them. And the purpose right now is to derive this expression. So, what we have done here is, we have measured a quantity with respect to some frame E0. We have measured the same quantity with respect to some other frame E. E is rotating with respect to E0 and the question is how does the time rate of change measured in E0 relate to the time rate of change of this same quantity measured with E and the answer is given by this formula. Let us now come to the proof of this equation. So, for this what we will do is that we will write down the vector u in terms of its measurement in the E0 frame which I will call as u0 k t e k. So, the components of u will change with respect to e k. At the same time, the vector will have different components in terms of the frame e whose unit vectors also change with time. So, I hope this equation is clear. Now, what we will do is that we will take the time derivative of u, that is what I am doing here and I will get that this is equal to u0 k dot e k okay. and over here I will get two sets of terms because of the product rule. I will get u i dot e i and I will get u i e i dot. These two must be equal. So, therefore, d u by d t uh, is given by u i dot e i. This is what I am calling as u dot, right? It is the rate of change of the vector plus u i e i dot. And the question now is, what is this? Well, e i dot is the rate of change of the unit vectors of the BFCS. These are the e 1 of t, e 2 of t and e 3 of t. And this BFCS is rotating at omega e with respect to e 0. So, we saw in the last lecture that e i dot is actually omega of e with respect to e 0 cross e i. So, this equation we had in the last lecture. The rate of change of the unit vectors of the BFCS of the secondary e with respect to the primary e 0 is simply the angular velocity of e with respect to e 0 cross product the unit vectors of the secondary themselves. So, when we substitute this, this equation over here, we will get that u dot will be u i dot e i plus u i omega e e 0 cross e i. Well, this quantity is what we are calling u and this quantity if you were sitting in e then you will think that e i are fixed and the rate of change of u will then simply be the rate of change of the components of u with respect to the unit vectors of e i. So, this is the rate of change of u with respect to an observer 
in E and we are calling this rate over here as u open dot or u circle okay and when you put that when you put this here you will get this equation to be exactly that so that's the proof okay so the rate of change of a quantity of a vector quantity u with respect to a primary that's this is equal to the rate of change of the same vector quantity with respect to the secondary which is this plus whatever is the difference in the measurement and the difference in the measurement is the angular velocity of the secondary with respect to the primary times the vector u please make sure you understand this formula this is the fundamental formula in everything that will follow i will make two remarks the first one is that while deriving this formula it may seem to you that we have assumed that these capital e k are fixed because when we took the time derivative we did not do e k dot well that is only if you are assuming that this time derivative with respect to some fixed observer actually you may also think that this time derivative is the rate of change of u measured with respect to the primary the e0 so when you think of it like that in that case it is obviously the case that ek will not change because this time derivative with respect to e0 so capital ek is going to be fixed which is exactly what happened over here we said that this time derivative is with respect to e and therefore ei is not changing so the remark is that e0 could also be rotating in which case u dot is the rate of change of u with respect to the rotating observer in e0 this u dot will then be different from the rate of change of u with respect to some other non rotating coordinate system the second remark is that if the secondary e the blue frame is not rotating with respect to e0 so that the rotational the angular velocity is zero then clearly this goes away and you have that these two the rate of change of the vector u with respect to the primary and the secondary is the same so the difference in the rate of change arises fundamentally because one of the coordinate system rotates with respect to the other okay 